we did that whole build with um, Mona where we um, created about a large metaverse build bounty where we kind of, um, there were some prices for building like really high quality rooms. And so here's an example of like um, going into one of these, these environments. Here's like a very different one. It's more of like a Blade Runner-esque uh, type city and I can like um, still walk around in this environment and so on. These are like kind of larger, larger spaces. So now I want to talk a bit about spaces. So I think you know one of the uh, key things about the metaverse is that it is embodied in some kind of space. It doesn't have to be three D. It could be a two D space. Uh, you know, think of Gather as a um, Gather Town as a, as a kind of um, metaverse type environment as well. Um, so it could be two D, uh, but but most people tend to think of the metaverse as a three D environment. Um, but the really key thing though is that there is a space, and humans are interacting with with each other and with agents and the environment itself um, in, in kind of a, a space uh, uh, location. And so you can think of that as um, also being happening in a 2D screen and rendered in a 2D screen, or you can think of that rendered in a VR um, headset and later on in an AR headset. And you can also kind of uh, stretch that by going into kind of like projection mapping in rooms and all that kind of stuff. Um, but really kind of the, the, the point to stress is that the metaverse, one of the key components and key layers is a generation of extremely high quality spaces. Um, and, and a lot of the stuff should be composable. So you can think of um, these kinds of things as, uh, again, composable um, things and rooms and buildings and plots of land and worlds and so on. Um, I'm, I'm much more of a fan of like building it up from the ground up. So building really high quality rooms, connecting those rooms together, um, connecting those rooms into buildings, and then maybe potentially placing those in a world um, as opposed to kind of like starting with a world and then building within that. Um, I think the, the, these two are like really great approaches and, and there's great things being built in both directions. Um, but I think extremely high quality um, experiences in the metaverse are going to vary a lot. And, and you want to have the ability to kind of like move across spaces uh, very fluidly. And I think that that's sort of the, comp the composability will help a lot with that. Um, you know, and, and think of all of this, you know, many different kinds of things that could be composable. So could be avatars, could be the wearables that characters are, uh, are, are wearing, could be um, artifacts in a room, could be like a statue or a piece of art, um, could be, again, the rooms themselves, could be different media, like video or audio that is playing in that room. Uh, think of all of those components as different pieces that you're pulling together into an environment. Um, I think a great starting point for a lot of this is, is museums, museums and galleries, because those spaces uh, really lean into the um, the art that has been generated already in the in the crypto space and in Web3. Uh, so you can lean into creating environments and spaces where you can place um, all kinds of uh, images, like 2D and 3D uh, art pieces, and then uh, create a compelling uh, experience for multiplayer, uh, for people participating and, and hanging out in these kinds of environments. And then of course, like there's the open virtual worlds and so on um, that, that would also extremely compelling um, experiences. Uh, that's uh, although although it, it remains to be seen how to kind of create blend programmability into these environments so that so that creators can create uh, some like really high quality and compelling experiences uh, here. Um, I want to kind of like give you a quick example of some spaces. Uh, so um, Mona is a, a really cool um, uh, a tool and system for um, minting uh, different kinds of environments uh, in different different rooms. And so you can think of making uh, an entire room where the room itself is an NFT. Uh, and so here I, I picked uh, a couple up and you can like, um, you, know, you can navigate this. Uh, we did that whole build with um, Mona where we um, created about a large metaverse build bounty where we kind of, um, there were some prices for building like really high quality rooms. And so here's an example of like um, going into one of these, these environments. But you know, like this is one room. Uh, here's like a very different one. It's more of like a Blade Runner-esque uh, type city and I can like um, still walk around in this environment and so on. These are like kind of larger, larger spaces. Then you can, of course, blend motion into the space. You can think of um, creating rooms and environments where you can have artifacts that are moving and so on. And there's still kind of like a really cool hangout space and you can you know, spend some time here. 
uh, but the room itself uh, has um, some beautiful quality to it that, um, uh, that that is like really, really special. It's so kind of like inviting people to hang out with you in a, a virtual space, in the virtual world, just becomes dramatically more interesting uh, if you kind of are hanging out in a space like this. And, you know, here is like the, um, you know, connection point to another room. Uh, so this is right, this room here right now is not connected, but here there'll be kind of um, a connection to another room. And so I, I'll be able to kind of walk through uh, from this room to, to another room. And then, you know, you can take it a step further and then, you know, start placing a lot of artifacts in there, but also kind of interactions in the space. You can create, you know, in environments that are moving and, you know, these kind of like moving platforms and, uh, and so on. And, and that kind of um, experience uh, then starts creating a much richer environment and much richer world. Again, this is a space that you're sort of meant to hang out in and so on. Uh, but you can think of like these um, elevators and platforms also being able to create um, games, uh, you know, simple, uh, think of like old, the old style platformers and so on, like all of that kind of stuff is like uh, now viable. And, and all of these rooms could be used for all kinds of different interactions from um, meetings to hangouts to, um, uh, you know, like actually running running games like an FPS or, um, or, or and, and so on. I wanted to kind of like give a preview of, of kind of what I meant by creating spaces that could be wired up together. You can think of each one of those rooms as being connected to to others and, and whatnot over time. Let's move on to uh, speaking about interaction. So I think one of the really critical uh, components of the entire metaverse idea is to like have uh, be able to interact with other participants and other other, other humans and agents in the space. Uh, this you know you can think of a lot of the stuff as like the basics of uh, 3D environments and 3D games and whatnot. You want to be able to move around. You want to be able to have a notion of multiplayer to be able to see other participants. You want to have um, audio to be able to speak to them. You want to have chat. Um, you want to be able to um, have avatars as well and kind of characters. Uh, here, I think it'll be extremely important and useful to be able to hook into things like Ready Player Me and so on, where you, participants can have their same avatar across different different experiences. Uh, you can also uh, play with video and, and, and um, kind of like do the, the mapping of like um, uh, video chat onto into a 3D character. Like I, I've seen like this done pretty interestingly and pretty well. Like that, that I think that's where, where the future is headed. Um, but, you know, you don't even need video. I think uh, many people are used to interacting with 3D characters on, on, on their own. Uh, and then you, of course, need some like basic set of interactions with the space. So being able to collide with walls, being able to kind of open things, being able to jump and, and so on. And then one really key component of all of this is to be able to show um, the presence of other participants in the environment. So that means being able to see what other characters and humans there are in the, in the space, being able to see who's online, um, what their latency is and so on, all the standard stuff that comes from uh, the game industry, because that ends up being really critical to good high quality user, user experience. So being able to understand um, the interactions between participants and how good the connection is and so on will help everybody get going at the beginning. It's possible that later on, like we can develop such good systems that we no longer need any of that, and the um, because it, it could detract from the experience. But I think in the intervening time right now, I think that kind of stuff can be extremely useful. Uh, and you can also think of like limitations in terms of you know not creating environments and, and and instances of rooms and so on that don't permit more than you know some limited number of participants, so that you can you know really hone in and get a super high quality experience. Uh, then moving on to kind of advanced interaction, um, this is where I think you want to be able to uh, really uh, go wild with the space and really lean into kind of the visions of the metaverse. Uh, you want to enable participants to uh, imbue objects with behavior. Uh, and this means that you want to enable people to program uh, different kinds of things. Uh, at the beginning, in this time period, I think what, what we want is to have some kind of um, uh, ability for developers to make games or make experiences on top of rooms decoupled from rooms. So you can think of some artists creating uh, the rooms themselves and then some uh, other developers and builders taking those rooms and programming experiences into them, whether it's a general experience that can be played again across all rooms or you know, a subset of rooms, or it's maybe a specific tailored experience specific to that room. Um, and this, I think like uh, what we, all you need to do is kind of create uh, some uh, runtime that will load the room and will load the program and then we'll kind of like um, run both together uh, and I think uh, this is this is not too far away uh, then of course you can you can um, then go from there to games and you can start creating and crafting uh, all kinds of games and, and experiences um, in those environments and and get to even more sophisticated things like like transactions and and longer 
interactions like you can create like a like a market place where you can like go up and like buy items or something like that or um you know store where you can try wearables on and see them and then like um uh, buy one or something like that or like where you can walk around in a, in a, in a large open space and like buy a, a plot of land or something like that uh, you can definitely start uh, weaving in all kinds of transactions like that or where you can trade with other participants you know you walk up to another human you open up a trade dialogue and you can trade some items those kinds of like interactions i think are really key to kind of build in a room or experience agnostic way um and get get all of that working really well as a set of primitives and a set of libraries like and then be interfaced with everything else uh, then from there i think you want to get into kind of some notion of world navigation and be able to kind of understand where you are relative to other things so if, if there's a single room and that's all there is then it's just that if the room is connected to other rooms then be able to show a mini map of, of all of those rooms connected if those rooms are inside of a larger environment with many other spaces be able to kind of jump across them uh, or have some listing or, or something like that. Um, I'm almost out of time, so I'll quickly give uh, a few uh, hack ideas uh, and then and, and there. And I think like, this is the sort of stuff that right now, if people go and build this, I think it can ha have a huge impact in, in pushing forward the, the these ideas and, and get things going. None of these hack ideas are like super compelling in terms of um, uh, you know, creating a, a super amazing experience that billions of people would use or something like that. But but it's really about kind of the moment we're in right now and just helping people speed up in in um and and uh compose a lot of this, this stuff together. Uh so so one one very simple idea that, that somebody could make right now is to create a, a tool, uh, let's call it home for a second, uh that binds an ENS name or some other uh crypto name to a Mona space. So you can like go to any any name like that and then bind into a space. Another idea might be to like create a playground where you can edit a space experience and code it in real time. So you can like pull up a, a code dialogue in your environment, in your space, and and change the the run the code of the experience so that you can get like a really fast feedback loop in terms of programming things. Uh, you can make you know simple FPSs that works work in any space. You can do things like programming NFT drops uh, um, and so on that, that can work in any space. Uh, or you can you know get to kind of crafted environments and crafted spaces where you can um build a space or build a room or build the world and then kind of author it and mint it and mint it as a space uh and then you know another set of ideas is like to think of different kinds of event sizes and tune an experience and program an experience for that so think of hangouts with with people uh just gathering together in a conversation or having simple games or board games or something like that um that's one one type of experience um then think of like parties where people want to play music or, or people want to hang out or um, people want to see each other and, and and talk and so on. So that might require positional audio. It might require like um, simultaneous syncing of music um, and so on. Meetups where people might want to give presentations might require sharing of screens and might require all of this um, other kind of like set of interactions, being able to kind of draw the attention. MC controls of like everything down and, and so on, broadcast of audio. Uh, and then if you want to run like something larger, like you know, events with 150 plus people and so on like that gets a lot harder but you know maybe thinking of like the types of events that you might want to host in a space can create like a like a set of presence and audio and set of interactions that are tuned for those those spaces uh and tuned for those those interactions thank you so much for having me uh really great to be uh talking with you and see you in the metaverse